around and see things that are going on. But, oh, God, our faith is entrusted in you. And so, Father God, we stand on that. We live on that. You are a solid rock, and we build our house on a solid rock, which the love that you have for us and the love, oh, Father God, that we have for you. Oh, Lord God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much, oh, Lord. Now, oh, Father God, as we continue into the service, we ask, oh, Father God, that your anointing fall on each and every one who is, comes up on the stage, that they sing with a new heart, that they play the instruments, oh, Father God, skillfully, and as, that they do it as unto you, oh, God. We thank you, Lord. Help us as we go. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 Hallelujah. So after that prayer, we'll ease now into the exhortation. Hallelujah. I believe, I believe that if there's breath in your body, if there's a breath in your body, you ought to be able to say, thank you, Lord. I believe that if you have the ability to stand on your feet, you ought to stand up. Everybody is not able to do that. So stand up and let the Lord know that you're grateful, that you have the use and activities of your limbs. Amen. I believe, I believe that if you walk with God, he'll have it so that you don't get tired. You'll be able to walk with it as long as you're present on this earth and even after that. I believe that God would not leave you nor will he forsake you if you put your trust in him. I myself am a witness to what God is able to do. Hallelujah. My life has not always been peachy. My life has not always been hunky-dory. I've had some challenges in my life. But one thing is for certain. God, God, God is able to see us through to anything that we might be going through. Sickness, God is able to see you through it. Lack of finances, God is able to see you through it. Bad relationships, God is still able to see you through it. We just have to trust in him. We just have to believe in him. Our faith is in him. I love him because of who he is. I love him because he saved my soul. Hallelujah. I love him because of him sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sin. Hallelujah. I love him today. Do you love him today? Tell him that you love him. I believe he wants to hear that. I believe he wants to hear that. I believe he wants us to get excited about serving him. I believe he wants us to get excited about praising him. I love praise and worship because it lets me express how I feel about him. Hallelujah. Open up your mouths. Tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Don't you know God is glad to hear that coming from the mouths of his people, coming from the mouths of the saints. Hallelujah to his holy name. I thank him today. Why don't you thank him today? Thank him today. Let me tell you something. You never know what you might face when you go outside of these walls. So thank him now in advance. Thank him while you got a chance. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Praise God. Somebody shout, the king is here. Uh, somebody shout, the king is here. The king is here. Come on, if you love the Lord, it means the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Would you give God a great big praise? Hallelujah. Give God a great big praise. Now, now, I need your help. I need your help. Keep that going, Chris. Don't sing, man. I need you to say, 
Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. There we go. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Let's go, men. Say, Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're Don't my stop. king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. Kingdom come, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory to the Come on, say, He will take us into the land. He will take us into the land. We will conquer in your name. Your life frees me to sing. 
I will praise you all my day. You're perfect in all your ways. Hear what you're saying. Hear what you're saying. Hey, oh, Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Lord, if his life frees you to sing, give God a, a great praise. Don't let it be a song, but let it be a praise. Somebody say he reigns. He reigns forever. Well, if you're glad that God reigns, would you just lift your hands? Lift your hearts. I need you to help me with this. We praise you, King of glory. We praise you. Prince of Peace, we lift our voice to heaven and praise your name. We praise you, King of Heaven, and we praise you, Lord of Earth. We lift our hands to heaven and praise your name As you reign in glory reign in majesty you reign forever king eternal Lift that, come on, say, we praise you, we praise you, King of glory. We praise you, Prince of Peace. We praise you, Prince of peace. We lift our voice, we lift our voice to heaven and praise your name. Come on, we praise you, King of heaven, Lord of earth. We praise you, King of heaven. We praise you, Lord of earth. We praise you, Lord of earth. We lift our hands. We lift our hands to heaven and praise your name. Because you reign in glory, say. you reign in glory, reign in man. Forever sing. You reign forever, King eternally. You reign in glory. You reign in glory. Reign in majesty. You reign forever. You reign. Say that, say. Lord, you are. Lord, you are. Holy. Holy. Lord, you are. Say, Lord, you, you are. You are holy. You're holy. Lord, you are, Lord, you are, you are, you are holy, 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 Lord, you are, Lord, you are, you are, you are holy, 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 Lord, you are, Lord, you are. Faithful, 
just eat. in your hands. Lift up your hearts. Rain. Jesus. Rain. Rain. Jesus. Rain. Come on, King of Zion. God declares how holy and how mighty and how righteous God is. And all we come to do is bear witness to the glory, to the power, to the might, to all that God is in our lives. When we come to fellowship and worship together, we're coming together to declare that he is holy. Are there any individuals in the house that can testify that God has been a good God and he's a holy God? The scripture says, be thou holy, for our Father is holy, for our God is holy. And so when we honor God through the holiness, the Bible says, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. That, that's, that's so good. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. So when we come to worship God, we're saying, God, God, you are holy. You are righteous. You are mighty. You are great and greatly to be praised. We open up our mouths and we declare to you how rich, how awesome, and how great you are in our lives. And we say you are holy. You are holy. Come on, let's say that one more time. You are. You are. You are. You are holy. 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 Lord, you are. Lord, you are. You are. Righteous. Righteous.
you would open up your mouth and declare personally how awesome God is in your own life. Begin to declare who he is. Begin to proclaim his goodness, his majesty, his glory, his power, his holiness in your own life. Because what we're doing is we're setting the stage. We're setting the atmosphere. We're creating a conducive environment for God to do whatever he needs to do in our lives. The more we open up our mouth, the more we make God happy and he begins to inhabit our praises. He begins to reside. He begins to get comfortable in the praises of his people. And all we're saying, God, you are holy. You are wonderful. You are, you are righteous. You are mighty. You deserve my praise. I, I, I think I said something right there. You deserve my praise. He deserves our praise. He deserves our praise. He deserves that we would open up our mouths and tell God how good and how great he is. He deserves that we would begin to give him the fruit of our lips and begin to give him the sacrifice of praise. He deserves. And we're thankful to God that we get to proclaim him. Are you happy today that you are able to be in the house of the Lord one more time? You may take your seats. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And anytime we come to magnify him, we come to bless him, we come to lift him up, it's a privilege. There are some folks in the hospital room right now wish they could be in the house of God to lift their hands and open up their mouth. And since we have full activity of our limbs, since we have the ability to be in the house, we might as well make good use of what God has given us and to give him the praise. That, that, that blesses me. When, when I have an opportunity to bless his name, I don't take it lightly. Some people want to sing praises and can't even open up their mouths to other word. We got free reign to open up our mouths, to lift our hands, to jump for joy, to clap our hands so you people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. We have the ability to do that and that's a privilege and that's a blessing for us to do that amen amen well good morning light good morning light <laughs> well listen I'm, I'm privileged and honored to welcome each and every one of you to light of the world christian tabernacle international 5883 georgia 155 north stop bridge georgia 30281 i want y'all to finish it for me right and we're here to celebrate God, celebrate Jesus for what he has done in our lives throughout this week. When we come on Sunday, it is just a reflection of what God has done Monday through Saturday. So we come to praise him. And when we come, we're saying, God, thank you for bringing us through last week. And we're starting this new week off with the praise on our lips. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I, I want us, are there any visitors in the house? Any visitors? If you're visiting with us this morning, would you uh, care and please bless us by standing and letting us know so that we can appreciate you for being a part of this worship experience. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. We don't take it lightly or take it for granted that there are a plethora of churches that you could have gone to throughout uh, today. But we thank God that you decided 
to come and be a part of this worship experience on this morning. So what we, what do we do like? Do we show our guests and visitors love? Can we stand together, greet each other, greet our guests, and let them know that we appreciate them for being a part of service on this morning? Amen. announcements that I want to bring to everyone's attention, pastoral emphasis. Um, we have our 2024 couples ministry a trip that's going to take place on October 10th through 12th, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, we're asking for all of those that will want to be a part of this couples ministry trip, uh, please give their uh, $50 a non-refundable deposit due by April the 30th. April the 30th. Um, and so we have uh, more details in the light of the glance. So we get the light of the glance every Monday around 9 a.m., right? And so y'all y'all be able to look at all of the uh, announcements and events and different things that are taking place. So please make sure that you govern yourselves accordingly for the couple's ministry trip. We're trying to make sure that we have that and we're continuing to uh, show love for our couples as we as we journey together, amen. Uh, we want to continue to keep uh, Dr. Roof and the team that is in West Africa. Have y'all been seeing the updates? Amen. And so uh, God has been blessing them as they've been in Ghana. Then I think the next place they went was Nigeria, and they are going to end up in Liberia. And so they've been on that trip since uh, two, what the, the 10th. Yeah, since, since April the 10th. So they will be back on tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, right? All right. All right. So we want to pray for their safe travels back to the United States and that God has blessed their entire trip and we, give, we pray for their traveling grace and mercy. Also, we have a brief, um, we have a casting call. 
for a skit that's going to take place for Mother's Day, and we're looking for a few good men. <laughs> Brother Joseph, don't you go nowhere, man. I'm not going to draft you this time. Hey, hey man, he was, a, he was the star of the show last time, so we praise God. But we do need two men, two men, two men who would make themselves available for this gift. Please see Minister Lorenzo Evans after the service or, 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 or any time so that we can make sure that we have that available. A few good men. Amen. We got them. Yeah, we got them. We got them. I see all these men posted up all over the place. We at least got two good men that can do what they need to do for, for, for this, right? <laughs> all right. Uh, don't forget that the JLS SCC is still uh, waiting to, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be celebrating our 10th anniversary for the JLSCC. Amen. Amen. And we have that black tie event on Friday, May the 17th at 7 p.m. And so we're asking everyone who is going to be able to support the JLSCC, please, please, please get your tickets uh, by April the 30th, by April the 30th. So we got about uh, another nine more days until that will, registration will be closed. So please, please, please get your tickets. We have a certain number of amount that we are expecting. We're inviting the community leaders. We're inviting uh, other guests. We're going to have um, special live entertainment. All of that is going to be available and Y'all know uh, we, we come to represent who we are as a church. Amen. JLSCC is who we are. That we're in the community doing work and making an impact uh, in our community. So we want to make sure that we celebrate what God has done for the past 10 years. Amen. Amen. Also, we have on May the 18th, one of our very own. Y'all know Cameron Ball, right? All right. So Cameron Ball is in his fourth year now at University of Arkansas. Amen. Amen. Make, making a great impact uh, on the football field, but also making an impact in this community. And so um, he has a football camp that's going to be coming up on May the 18th. May the 18th, a football camp. This would be the second year that this has been taking place. And so, what's the name of, of the, of the, um, I got it in my phone. I, so. All right. So, it's the second annual youth football camp. Um, be sure to secure your, your, uh, your athletes spot by visiting the website. And I want to make sure I get the website right. Oh Lord. See how that goes when you're doing stuff. It always want to act funny. You got me. Yeah, let me get this right. Yeah, www the cam ball foundation dot org www dot the t h e cam ball uh, foundation dot org all right and you said five to five to eighteen for boys and girls all right all right so please please we want to make sure that we go to that website we register is it is there a registration fee for the kids Everything is free. Amen. 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 So we want to make sure that they, we, we, we support the Ball family, Cameron Ball, for the Cam Ball Foundation on May the 18th. And what time is that going to be? 11 to 3. The registration is at 10, and the camp will be from 11 to 3. All right. All right, can we give God praise for that? 
I think that's all for me, Deacon Baker. Hallelujah. Y'all hear me okay? Because I, I need for you all to hear me. I need for you all to hear me. So I just wanted to check. Uh, next week, April 28th, we got a special occasion that we'll be celebrating. And that is the birthday. Is that your actual birthday? Saturday's actual birthday, April 27th. But we are going to celebrate that next week, April 28th, the birthday of our illustrious pastor. Get excited about that. Amen. I'm glad he is my pastor. Amen. I'm glad he's my pastor. And I say that with enthusiasm. And I want you all to keep your same enthusiasm when I make this next statement. Everyone, who is everyone? Everybody. Everybody is asked to give an offering of love to our pastor. Amen. Oh, I like that enthusiasm. I love it. I love it. Now, we do have a caveat to that. We want money. Money. We want money. Dollar bills, y'all. Greenbacks. George Washington's. Do you know who, uh, what bill the George Washington is on? Hamilton's, all that. We want that, okay? Money. So, we're not asking for a specific amount. We're not asking for a specific amount. We're just asking for a large amount. That's all. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding with that. <laughs> So, so this is how you do it. You can give cash, cash, no gift cards. That's what it says. Uh, on the app, choose Pastoral C and put in there Pastor O Birthday in the memo. All right? Is everybody going to be a willing participant with me on that? Amen. Let's show him how much we love and appreciate the work he is doing at the light of the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's Deacon Baker. All right. It's offering time in the house of God. Let's give God praise for the offering. Amen. As we give, we're, we're, we're sowing into the kingdom of God. As we give, we're obedient to what God has blessed us with. And so when we give, we say, God, thank you for keeping us, for providing for us, for being our Jehovah Jireh for being the God who continues to provide, to continue to give us that ram in the bush. We thank God for uh, his provision over our lives. So as we give this morning, uh, let's give according to what God has given us, but then also I pray that you would give according to where you see yourself going. I think I said something. Don't give where you are right now. Give to where you see yourself going and so what we do is we sow in to not only where what God is doing in the house but when we bless the house of God we also bless ourselves we bless when we give and a give out of our obedience to what he's done God's word is true how many of you know that God's word is true and God says if you would bring all the tithes and offerings into my storehouse so that there would be meat in my house. He says this, prove me. Prove me. In other words, put what I've told you to the test. Prove me now. Herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have what? Room enough to receive. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. 
Y'all don't have to take my word for it, but that's the word of God. And God's word shall not lie. So as we give, we're saying, God, bless this time of our giving. Use these gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom and for the advancement of your cause. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God say amen. We will be guided by our ushers.
thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to come before you, Lord, just give you glory, give you honor, give you praise, Lord, right now, Lord, because without you, Lord, we're nothing, Lord. I just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for peace, love, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. It's all because of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
How many know about the grace of God? Come on, come on. How many know about the grace of God, that God's grace is because of God's grace that we made it this far, that we can't make it without the grace of God? The grace of God is the unmerited favor that God has bestowed upon a believer. Amen. Come on, clap our hands for our men's, our male chorus. Hallelujah. God's grace is something that we didn't deserve. But he gave it to us anyhow. That's, that's good news. <laughs> you know, when your, when your child deserved to get a spanking, and because you had, you extended grace to them, first you had mercy on them first. And, and we've, we've used the analogy of mercy is withholding what you do deserve. Grace is giving you what you don't deserve, right? And so, so, not only, so I see mercy as sparing the spanking, and then I see grace as giving you ice cream, right? You deserve the spanking, but they withheld the spanking from you. And then they had the audacity on top of that to bless you with some ice cream. That's what God does. God withheld the judgment from us. Because the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So the wages we deserve, because all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. We deserve death, but God spared us death and then gave us salvation. It's a gift from God. As Ephesians chapter 2 says, it's not of works. That's why we shouldn't be boasting on anything that we do. It's, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So, so that's, that's our little tutorial lesson this morning that we're getting the grace of God we got the mercy of God and then how many know that God is faithful <laughs> scripture says in Jeremiah it's because of God's mercies that we are not consumed then the scripture goes on to say great is thy faithfulness <laughs> I don't know about you, but that blesses me. That gives me hope. That gives me joy. That, gi that gives me the ability to open up my mouth to know that God has extended his grace, his mercy, his faithfulness towards me, even in the midst and moments when I'm unfaithful. Y'all clap like y'all been faithful all your life. I just got a couple of sparing claps. Like, oh, I've been faithful. I woke up this morning singing, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. I want us to continue. Uh, we've, been, we've been blessed by what God has been taking us through, uh, through Scripture in the life of Abraham. So we're going to continue not only the life of Abraham, but the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac. We're on Isaac now, and we're going to be moving towards Jacob. But all of this has given us an understanding of what it means to walk in kingdom authority. That kingdom authority is being in alignment having allegiance with God and because we're in alignment and have allegiance with God, God gives us access. Right? So if we could stand we're going to read verses 17 through 25. Genesis 26 verse 17 through 25. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 26 verse 17, it says then Isaac departed from there. There was Gerar that we talked about in the beginning of chapter 26. He departed from there, Gerar, and pitched his tent 
in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac dug again the wells. I want y'all to really underline that. Dug again the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. Also, Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdmen, saying, This water is ours. So he called the name of that well Esek, because they quarreled with him. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna, and he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth, because he said, for now, the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Amen. This morning, I want to just talk from this topic. The blessings will follow you. <laughs> the blessings will follow you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for the privilege and honor that you have given us to open up your holy word to glean from what you have to say, to then not only glean, but appropriate it in our lives so that it may bear fruit in our lives. Father, we don't take your word for granted, but we know that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, when we hide your word in our hearts, it gives us the ability not to sin against you. When we take your word seriously and we take you at your word, we see you for who you are as the God over everything. So, God, we thank you for your word. And we know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall remain and last forever. God, we thank you that we, you've given us an everlasting word, a word that's power is sustained from yesterday to the future, that you cannot lie because of your word. Now use me now as a vessel to speak and declare your word and teach and preach your word in a way that gives clarity and understanding that charges us and challenges us and convicts our hearts and moves us from complacency to a place of dedication and commitment to you. God, we thank you now that you would use this moment as we share together that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. And the people of God says, amen. You may be seated in the presence of our holy and righteous God. The blessings will follow you. The blessings will follow you. My brothers and sisters, as we were dealing with the scripture on last week and how the scripture showed that in chapter 12 of Genesis chapter 26, that Isaac sowed in the land and reap in the same year a hundredfold. Now the scripture says, even in Genesis chapter 26 verse 1, that there was a famine in the land. God told uh, Isaac not to go back to the place where his father went, but he wanted him to go where he would tell him, and God told him to go to Gerar. Now, this is significant because the Bible says that the king Abimelech was in Gerar. Gerar was the same place that Abraham went five or six chapters earlier to Gerar when, when Abraham lied and said that Sarah was his wife. And then we see that Isaac makes the same mistake and lies and says that Rebekah is not his wife. It is his sister. Same thing Abraham did 
five, six chapters earlier, Isaac is falling into the same trap. But God makes a promise to Isaac because of the promise that he made to his daddy. And I said the promise still stands on last week that this week the blessings will continue following you even though you might have made some mistakes. The good news about God is that God still is faithful to his word even when we're unfaithful to God. Do y'all understand that there are moments in all of our lives that we have some moments and setbacks in our lives, some failures and mistakes that we've made, and God still shows up and shows up because he loves us and he made a promise to us and his word cannot fail? And because God is so good, God continues to show up and give us blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings. And we're wondering why God is still faithful to us even in our unfaithfulness because God's word cannot lie. The Bible says that Isaac sowed in a land where there was famine and he reaped a hundredfold in the land where there was famine. The Bible says that he began to grow and prosper and became very prosperous and had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great numbers of servants. So the Philistines envied him because of what he had and because of how God was prospering his life, even in the midst of a famine, God was still showing himself faithful. And they're looking at Isaac, and Isaac is now reaping benefits of the promises that were made to his father. And they're seeing him prosperous in a land where there's famine. Understand this. That you, because you're connected to God, can prosper in places where other people cannot. I, I want y'all to get this, that because you are connected to God, you're walking in kingdom authority, you have alignment, you're in on assignment, and God has given you access, other people will look at you and try to figure out how you're being blessed when the times are hard, but you're still prospering. And Isaac is being blessed by God in the midst of a famine. And all of the people that are in the land are watching Isaac prosper. And they're envying him. They're upset that he's prospering. And they're not. As a matter of fact, his prosperity is an indictment on their lack of prosperity. He's being blessed, and they're trying to figure out why he's being blessed, and they're not being blessed. But it would make sense to me, instead of them doing what they did, because the Bible also said that Abraham was blessed, and now his son being blessed, you should be inquiring Abraham or Isaac on how did they get to the place of being blessed instead of now trying to stop their blessings. Because look what they did. The Bible says they begin to fill up, stop up the wells of water that Abraham had. And now Isaac is trying to now reap, the tap into the same blessings that Abraham had. But instead of them inquiring and asking the question, how did you become so prosperous? They start hating on the prosperity of Abraham. Ain't that just like folks? 
instead of them inquiring and asking, man, you know what, I see God is touching you, I see things are blessing your life, instead of them asking about the blessings and how they were able to now continue to be blessed and prosper in a famine, they start t- stopping the wells of water. And, and I want to share this with you. To stop a well in that time was an act of war. Water was a source of of prosperity. Water was a source of life. They had livestock in possession and they needed water in order to give to their possession. So when you stop up a well, you're trying to stop the access of the source that will give what he's being blessed on, life. So Isaac had every right to fight against the Philistines. He had every right because those were Abraham's wells. I want to, I want to stop parenthetically and pause in chapter 20, let's see, 21, verse 22 of Genesis, the Bible said Abimelech, who was king of Gerar, made a covenant and an everlasting pact with Abraham. So he makes a pact with Abraham and he says, listen, listen, we're not going to harm you, you don't harm us. That was the pact that was made in earlier chapters. After God continued to bless Abraham, And now Isaac, his son, who is the heir to get everything that Abraham has, you're stopping up the wells after the death of Abraham. So in other words, you think that the blessing don't apply to the children. When the blessing is on the parent. So they begin to stop up all of the wells of Abraham, y'all see what's happening? They're, ma- they're, they're thinking now Abraham's gone and the, and the blessing don't apply no more. Abraham is gone and the agreement that was made between Abimelech and Abraham is null and void. They think that now since the patriarch is dead, we can go back to doing what we normally do. But God is saying, no, when you make a promise, and a promise has been a covenant between you and them, you can't break it even when it goes down to the children. See, that blesses me. That blesses me because what I understand that there are blessings in my parents' life that now transfers down to me as a result of the faithfulness of my mama and daddy. And the prayers that they prayed on my behalf still exist even after they're gone. See, that's good news. That's good news that that I thank God that after my parents die, when they, whenever God called my mama to home, God has already called my daddy home. But guess what? The promises still stand. And God's word cannot be revoked. But the Bible says that they stopped up. Verse 15, all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, and they filled it with earth. They packed it down. They said, listen, we, 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 this ain't going to never have no water again. They filled it with dirt. They filled it with dirt. I'm going somewhere. They filled it with dirt. After the daddy died, they filled the area that was watering and flourishing with dirt. 
Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you this. Folks always want to put dirt on you. Folks always want to scandalize your name, want to bring up rumors or or things of your past, want to always bring that stuff up to smear dirt on your life. They was like, well, Abraham wasn't was perfect. Abraham lied and said that Sarah was his wife, and now his son doing the same thing. <laughs> Smearing dirt. Pouring dirt. They, they, they always bringing up what you did in your past. Always, listen, your genealogy was like this. Y'all ain't wasn't nothing but a bunch of drunks and winos. Bringing up dirt. Filling the well with dirt. God has changed Abram's name from Abram to Abraham. He is a father of nations, but they still trying to fill his legacy with dirt. And Abraham does what any son does. He gives honor to what happened with his father. He goes to all of the places where his father dealt well, de- dug wells and redigs them. And he keeps the same name that his father named the well. Honoring the legacy that was being filled with dirt. Don't you let folks talk about your family. Some of it might be true, but you continue to highlight the good stuff. Don't you let nobody talk about who who you come from, the line that you come from. Because all they're trying to do is now put a testimony against the name And if God has done something in the life and the lineage, then all you got to do is just highlight what God has done. You don't have to highlight what they did. You just say God is still good. God is still blessing. God is still keeping me. God kept my mama, kept my daddy, kept them. And if he kept them, he can keep me. That should be the testimony in our lives. I don't care what you say about them. I'm going to speak well of who they are. They are my family. This is my blood. The Bible says that Abimelech tells Isaac, listen, you got to leave here. Says to Isaac, go away from us. For you are mightier than we. Leave where, where we're from. Leave, leave. Don't, don't stay around us. I would think that they would want Isaac around because blessing is on Isaac's life. And if they endear and entreat themselves to Isaac, maybe the blessings might begin to overflow in their lives. But they say, leave. After you've already made a covenant relationship with his father, but he says, leave. So Isaac did exactly what they asked him to do. Listen, sometimes when people tell you to leave their life, the only thing you can do is just leave. When somebody tell you, I don't want you no more, and I don't need you in my life no more, and and you're, you're, you're becoming a hindrance to me, and your prosperity is an indictment. It makes me insecure about who I am. Just go ahead and take your marching papers and keep on walking. You need to be like C.C. Peniston. Keep on. All right. Yeah, y'all, did y'all get that? Anyway. And the Bible says, Abraham dug again the wells which his father dug in the days of Abraham, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father called them. Verse 19, and also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well running water there. Now, not only did Isaac 
dig back the wells that his father dug, but he also dug some new wells. Now, I want y'all to get this, that we also not only stand on the legacy of our parents and our forefathers, but also God gives us the ability to forge new territory. Ooh, ain't that good? That we should be able to honor God for what God has done in the past and through our parents. But God don't allow us to just stay stagnant in what our parents have done. But God also gives us to build on top of that legacy and deal new, dig new wells. That we should go further than where our parents have gone. My dad used to always say to me, he was like, son, 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 I want you to do better than what I did. I want you to prosper more than how I prospered. I want you to get more than what I've got. And so every child should have the opportunity to exceed where their parents have gone. As parents, we should set our children up to exceed what we do. That's good parenting. That you set a foundation. That they get, they're able to stand higher than, and start further than where you were able to start. So now Isaac not only digged back the wells that his father dug, but then he also dig new wells. But here comes the contention. Here comes the issue. The Bible says that when he gets to the valley of Gerar, he dig wells and he found water there. When he finds water there, verse number 20, the Bible says, but the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, this water is ours. So Isaac calls that place Essek or Esek, which means to quarrel or which means contention. That the place where I am right now, that although I am now uh, uh, journeying to new journeys and new land, where I am is causing some level of contention. So he leaves that well and goes to another place. And when he gets to this place, his herdsmen, his servants dig another well. And when they dig another well, the same men that followed him from Esau ended up being in this place. And they begin to quarrel with him. And he calls this place Sitna, which means hatred or anger. So it went from quarreling and contention to hatred and anger. was a progression because he kept digging. Don't ever stop digging because folks are mad at you or quarreling against you. Just keep on moving. <laughs> keep digging. See what I love about God, God gives us examples on how we need to be consistent in our lives even in the midst of persecution, opposition, in the midst of enemies and haters, you got to keep digging. Isaac didn't stop. But what he did do, he said, all right, I leave this place. I'm going to go to another place. And when he digs in the third time, he's digging, and he noticed there ain't nobody coming. His servants are digging. They find water. And they recognize there ain't no quarrel or contention. Ain't no hatred or anger. And now he's in a place where he can reap like he needs to reap. And he calls that place Rehoboth. He said, this is the place where God has made room. For me, don't you? Aren't you glad that in the midst of of being in positions of contention and hatred, being in a place of anger and quarrel, 
that God will still allow you to go to place. And this is all I wanted to say. This is where the scripture and the message and the title come together. Do you realize that wherever Isaac went, the blessings followed? Now, there are some promises that God has stipulated that are connected to a place. But then there are other promises that are just connected to you. No matter where you go, the blessings will be on your life because the blessing is connected to you. So what I love about God is when God has given you promises of his word, it doesn't matter where God will allow you to prosper wherever you go. And that is Isaac's life. Isaac went from being in Gerar to the valley of Gerar. And then when he gets there, he finds contention in Essek and he finds hatred in Sitna. But he continues to move and he continues to dig. And when he gets to a place where there's no contention, no hatred, no people trying to kick him out the land, God has now opened up an area and provided room for him to prosper. I want some Rehoboth in my life. I don't know about you, but I want some areas of Rehoboth where wherever I go when I'm there, that God has allowed the room to be made and expanded for me where I can operate. Not that you won't get hate because people are going to hate you from a distance no matter what. But what it does mean is that where you are and where you're planted, they can't mess with you and you're able to prosper and move the way you need to move and have peace. Oh, I, I, yeah, that's another point that I wanted to bring. Peace. Do y'all know that when they were fighting him over the wells of his father, he had every right to fight, but he chose not to fight, and he sought peace. He just kept it moving. That's another point that I want to bring to your attention, is that when you seek peace, God would allow things to happen when you're always fighting and bickering and complaining and quarreling. You're not going to get anything out of that. So it's better to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. Victory, victory shall be mine. You don't have to defend yourself on everything. You don't have to go up and say, well, this is what I know is right and I'm doing no, no, just keep your peace. Just be quiet. Listen, listen, listen. Just keep on moving. And God will show and vindicate you because the blessing is on you. There are issues in your life where you don't have to fight. You don't have to defend yourself. The scripture says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So in some instances, you don't have to say nothing. If you're walking in truth and integrity, just keep your truth and integrity and keep on moving. And God allows that place to be a place where he got room. Ain't nothing like having your own stuff in your own room and you can move and maneuver how you want to maneuver and you ain't got to worry about, listen, when you on somebody, when you in somebody else's house, I know it's good, you might be visiting for a while, but you just can't be as comfortable as you are when you're in your own house. They may extend grace to you, they may extend a, a, a covenant with you, they may say, hey, listen, take your time, nah. Because you don't want to extend your welcome. I've learned that. I would rather leave before time than to have to somebody say, okay, it's time for you to go. That's, 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 that's being courteous and kind. Isaac had every right, though, to fight for the wells of his father. That land was made a covenant chapters early between Abimelech and Abraham. 
Now I want y'all to read this because this is, this is why scripture is so good, y'all. If you know how to track what was said in the previous chapters and to can, continue to keep them in the back of your head when you continue to read the scripture, it'll all make sense on how everything is connected together. The word of God is very interesting. And it's connected. And, it, it, and, and the second Timothy chapter 3 says the word of God is, is inspired. All right. Y'all keep reading with me. So the Bible says, verse, verse number 22, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Then the Bible says in verse number 23, that he went from there to Bathsheba, and the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, boy, God is so good. And, and the Lord of God said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. So he built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. And he pinched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dug a well. Now look at verse number 26. Then Abimelech came to him from Gerar with Ahazah, Ahazah and one of his friends, and Phicol, the commander of his army, and Isaac said to him, why have you come to me since you hate me and you have sent me away from you? But they said, we have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. <laughs> Y'all done kicked him out of the land now. And wherever he's gone, he's been prosperous and they still tracking his progress. See, let me tell you what, 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 ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, see, let me tell you what folk do. Folk, folk will kick you out and then watch to see what's going to happen. Listen, they be watching. They be wanting to see if you're going to prosper after they kick you out. They, 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 they kick him out and then they watch it. Seeing if he's going to fall, if he's going to fail. And everything that happens, he begins to be blessed. And God continue to expand and make room and show his blessings. And they steady watch it. And they steady watch it. The same people that kick you out are the same people that going to come back. Woo, that, 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 I, I, I read that scripture, man. That thing, that thing got good to my sense. Myself, I was like, listen, them jokers watching Isaac. Wanting to see his demise, wanting to see him fail. And after he continues to prosper, they come back. Some folk going to have to eat their words. And they come back. They come back. We have certainly seen that the Lord is with you. So we said... Let there now be an oath between us. Look, look at how they act. Between you and us. And let us make a covenant with you that you will do us no harm. Now they was doing him harm. But now they want to say, well, Isaac, we don't want you to retaliate on us for what we did. Let me tell you, most people, the reason why a lot of people come back to you is not because they have the power to do something over you. But now they've seen that you've gotten more powerful, and they know that you have the power to do something to them. So now they want to come back and create some level of, of alliance with you so that you won't do to them what they did to you. They're not really coming 
because they want to build a healthy bond and relationship with Isaac. They just coming so there won't be no retaliation. But let me tell you how good God is. This is how you need to operate. You always need to operate with a level of grace, with a level of mercy. The Bible says, look what he did. Isaac makes a fast and eats and drinks uh, so that they ate and drank. And they arose early in the morning and swore an oath with one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him where, how? In peace. And it came to pass, the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug, and said to him, we have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. This is a place where Abraham had also called Beersheba back some chapters ago. All I'm saying, now I, I will read this verse, this, this verse number 34, it, it, it going to come back. It says when Esau, uh, uh, this another, this another part of the story. Yeah, I, I want to stop right here because I don't want to change. So we're going to stop right here. But, but, but I, I want y'all to see how good God is. The blessings follow us. If we're connected to God, we're faithful to God, and we honor God for what God has done even in the past in our family's lives. We can walk in the blessings of God. Walk with our heads up. We don't have to walk with our heads down, being ashamed. I'm done. Everybody stand to your feet. But I want y'all, I want y'all to get this. That God gives you the ability to operate in a place of peace. You can, you can walk, have room. You can, you can be at peace. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder. When you know that the blessing is with you, you can walk with your head high. You can walk with a sense of dignity and swagger. You, 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 you walk with confidence, not arrogance, but you knowing who you're connected to in God gives you peace. When other folks are staying up at night because they're trying to figure out how God is blessing you, you can go to sleep and be sleep, yep, sleeping good while other folks up worried about you. That's the peace that God gives when you're able to focus in and know what God has done for you in your life. And you're not hating on nobody else. Listen, in, in God's kingdom, there's room for everybody. That's, that's a word right there. There's room for everybody. We don't need to hate. We don't need to, we don't need to be scheming or planning or plotting. We can just congratulate and give God praise for what God is doing in all of our lives. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this is the time that we extend the invitation. If there was someone who is not saved, first of all, you would never know what room is life until you allow room in your heart for God. You would never know what it means to have peace until you allow the one who is the prince of peace to overtake and shatter your life. You'll never know what love is until you allow the one who is love to shower his love on you. All we have to do is allow for it to happen. Jesus already did the work. He already did everything that is needed to be done. And all we got to do is just receive what he's done on our behalf. So if you're unsaved, if you're unsaved, receive the love, receive the mercy, receive the grace, receive the salvation. Accept it. The Bible says, 
But if you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shall be saved. So that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. So if you're unsaved, this is your opportunity. Come on in. Receive a gift of salvation for your life. If you're online and you're watching this and there's something that has resonated with you this morning and you're saying, I need to come and receive the Savior over my life, this is your opportunity to come. Number two, if you're unchurched, listen, we would love for you to be a part of this local body assembly endeavoring to now eradicate darkness with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You belong here. You belong here. This is where you belong. So number two, if you're unchurched, number three, if you want to rededicate your life, let me make this clarification on what rededication is, right, for Sister Latoya. I know, we talk. Rededication, in my, my definition of rededication is this, that you were saved, and you're still saved, but you went astray. You didn't lose relationship, but what you did lose was fellowship. That's what, when you go astray, God is still your God, but you're out of fellowship with God. Because maybe you were disobedient to what he said, or maybe you gone, went your own way. And this is what rededication is. So when, when you say rededicate, you're saying, I want to get back into alignment, right fellowship with God. Fourth of all, if you need prayer. Number one, unsaved. Number two, unchurched. Number three, rededicate. Number four, prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? My sister, he will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life. New life abundant. So. To Christ. To Christ. All right, I'm going to stand this opportunity one more time. Let's sing it out with our whole heart one more time. Let's say it. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my take your seats. Amen. Can we give God praise? I said take your seats, but we need to stand. And we're going to stay standing. And we don't have nothing else on the agenda. So let's stand. Amen. Amen. That's just the, I, I, I said last week, we are up and down church, right? <laughs> up now, we just, listen, listen. Listen, I'm thankful to God for what God has done today. Are, are y'all happy? Amen. 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 Can we give God, God praise for one of our own, Dr. D. Stokes, being in the house with us? Amen. 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 It's always good to see her face. She's smiling. I always, I always like Dr. D. when I see her. Amen. We thank God. Listen, as we close, we close. Dr. D, would you come up and, and just dismiss us today? Come on, somebody give God praise.
and all the time he's good. The blessing follows us. Thank you, Pastor. What a word today. What a worship experience today. You know, I, I did something stupid this morning. I'm going to close. I'm not going to be up here because I know you're ready for me to go. And my, so my back is hurting, so pray for me uh, as I drive back to North Carolina. But let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you for who you are and not just for what you do. But we know that you do a lot. And so we thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for healing our bodies. We thank you for anointing. We thank you for power. We thank you for blessing that follows us from generation to generation. We thank you for the prayers of our parents. We thank you for the prayers of our grandparents. We thank you for the prayers of our aunties and uncles and cousins and friends and everyone who's prayed for us. We receive those prayers. May they manifest this year in the name of Jesus. May they manifest in healing. May they manifest in anointing. May they manifest in wealth. May they manifest, God, in blessing. And we, I speak that over us today, God, and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Now the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, his shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. You are dismissed. God bless you.